Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. And apologies for this extreme close-up. It's not really meant to be of me. It's meant to be of that. You've seen it before on the other video, but there was only a couple of the buds open then, and now obviously they're all open. So this is Zygopedalum. We think, thanks to Michael, it's Trozy Blue, although a few people have given me some examples of what it might be. And honestly, when I look at the images, it could be those two. Uh, I'm going for Trozy Blue for now until anybody tells me definitively that it's not. So today's video is going to be all about a greenhouse wish list or a grow room wish list. Not, as you may think, to do with, directly anyway, plants. This is to do with what I would really love my greenhouse to have or to be like, accessories that I would like, uh, things that would improve my growing conditions to make life easier for growing plants to the uh, optimum, as it were. So let's dive in. And we are in. Okay, so we're talking about... Uh, a greenhouse that I've had about 18 months now and it's been absolutely fantastic. I spent an awful lot of time researching the kind of greenhouse I want and some people would say that I am absolutely off my head as it were spending what amounted to about 7,000 in the end and I have to say I'm still paying for it for what is really just a hobby it's not something that I'm going to make a profit on not until of course I get to about a million subscribers which I think is probably unlikely given the the kind of niche area that we're in so I know, probably some other reasons as well but we won't go into those so yeah, it's a 10 foot by 14 foot greenhouse. It's not my first greenhouse. I had another greenhouse for 25 years prior to that. That was just a little six by eight foot greenhouse. I've opened up the screen today so that you can see all of it in its entirety. And the reason for partitioning off some of this obviously is so that I can have a cool side and a warm side. But today, well, I'm filming this video both sides are going to be a warm side at 18 degrees but it won't be for very long I'm sure they'll benefit from that little boost so this greenhouse was actually what I would class a mid-budget greenhouse despite the uh, what you might think is a, an expensive amount I spent a lot of time researching it and the budget style greenhouses just didn't do what I wanted them to do in terms of durability robustness solidity and there are one or two things that i'm going to go through now that i would really really have loved this greenhouse to have but alas they didn't the higher end greenhouses were what you might call bespoke greenhouses those that were built to order to uh, a, a specific plan or specification that you had hesitate to use the word specified <laughs> but you know you get the idea you know so something that you would say right look I've got this amount of space I want it to be this tall I want it to be this big I want these features in it and so on those were the higher end greenhouses and of course there were some what I might call off the shelf or off the peg greenhouses that just had extra bits for instance they might have had like a mixture of wood and aluminium framing which I thought was a really good idea I've noticed Monty on Gardner's World has one of those I forget the name of the manufacturer but I mean we won't go into the manufacturers but uh, they were they were more expensive than these this is a, a rhino greenhouse I believe they do sell throughout the world and I have to say, I'm on the whole, I'm really, really pleased with it. It's a lot better than the last greenhouse I had, but it's approximately seven times more expensive as well. It's horses for courses, isn't it? It depends what you're looking for. And this had just about the right amount of mix within the budget that I was looking for. So I would definitely recommend Rhino greenhouses. If, if for example, you're growing tropical plants, orchids, carnivorous plants, anything that's going to need to be kept warm throughout the winter, then you're better off with a greenhouse like this. So what I want to do today is I want to give you a wish list. So obviously I've been in this now for a full winter and a full summer, and we're approaching winter again, we're in autumn now. And what I'd like to do is give you like a rundown of what I think would make this a better environment for my plants, taking them through into the winter time. And I think that might be useful for people, even if they've got a grow room. 
Now, don't forget, this is a wish list. So some of these things uh, may well be cost prohibitive. And if you work for some kind of greenhouse manufacturer, you might be looking at this wish list and saying, well, that's ridiculous. We can't possibly provide those. It would cost too much. It is a wish list. However, there are some things on here that I think may be useful for anybody who's interested in providing a service for their customers. There are a lot of orchid growers. There are a lot of tropical plant growers throughout the world who live in more temperate regions and I think there is a definite market even if they are being provided or these these items are being provided as accessories extras whatever you want to call it uh, on top of what they already offer um, why not you know why not provide if there's a demand there why not provide that service or that product so that's what we're going to go into today so let's get started with that Okay, so I did a little survey on my community, the community post that you can put on once you've reached a thousand subscribers. And <clears throat> I asked two, well, I give two options. I said something along the lines of, where do you grow? Do you grow in a greenhouse? Do you grow in a grow room? Or do you just not grow at all? Now, I probably should have given some more options there. Um, I didn't really spend a lot of time mulling it over. Uh, I from some of the answers i discovered that there are there are other options however the thing to note was that out of the people that answered the survey exactly the same amount grew in a greenhouse and a grow room i think it was 41% in a greenhouse 41% in a grow room and i think it was 18% that didn't grow at all so obviously those subscribers are just interested in plants they just like to look at them they don't particularly like to participate in them or maybe they grow in the garden or maybe i didn't give the option of where they grew uh, some people grew in polytunnels and in that case i think they ticked the box for greenhouse so it just gives you an idea anyway of the kind of places where people are growing these things. So I thought it would be useful to come up with some things that would improve. I'm looking at the door now because this is one of my biggest bugbears in this specific greenhouse and any greenhouse that I've been in, to be honest, because the door is the area where you lose an awful lot of heat. Now I've got mine just about as insulated as, as I could possibly get it. I've got bubble wrap on it. I've got one of those plastic screen things. I don't know what you call it, like a strip curtain, isn't it? Uh, that insulate it from any drafts that come in. I've got draft excluder that I've added in between the two doors when they shut. I've got draft excluder down the sides there because without any of those things, there are big gaps. And when I'm talking about big gaps, we're talking about, you know, like about three, two to three centimetre gaps all the way around, right along the bottom as well. And in fact, despite the fact that I've lived with it for over 12 months, uh, I found it was only about a week ago, I found another gap under there, which was well big enough for slugs to crawl in and creatures to crawl in. Now, if you're growing tomatoes and potatoes in your greenhouse and you're only going to use it during the summer months, or maybe you're growing seedlings and so on, that might not be something that bothers you. But looking through the number of orchid societies throughout just the UK, for example, there are a lot of orchid societies. There are a lot of various tropical plant societies. You know, it might not be orchids. It might be streptocarpus. It might be carnivorous plants. It might be mastervalias. It might be pelagoniums. It might be hardy, not very hardy. It might be uh, tender cyclamen, cyclamen persicum. There are loads and loads and loads of societies. And all these people, unless they're growing in a house, they're going to want uh, a door on their greenhouse that doesn't have gaps in it. I understand the need for ventilation. We'll come to that in a moment. But that is something that is high priority on my wish list. I wish there could be some kind of door that didn't have all these gaps around it. It must be possible. You know, my front door to my house doesn't have loads of gaps around it. it there must be a way of doing it. And while we're talking about gaps, this was one of the reasons that I chose Rhino is because when I went looking at some of the other greenhouses, because a lot of these greenhouse manufacturers that 
uh, produce in the past they used to produce like either a budget end or a high end or a, a mid range but now you find that most of these manufacturers produce a range you know right across from low to high in in price but when i went looking at some of the others even the higher range you would find that they even had gaps in the framing especially in the corners of the frame where it, it all kind of butts together that was an area where there were real big gaps now of course i know you can stuff it with things but you don't want to be doing that you don't want to pay money to find that your greenhouse has all these gaps in the frame this one didn't the only single area that it had gaps was around the door frame so that's number one on my wish list and while we're talking about gaps in the greenhouse I'll just take you down here to the louvre windows because this was an area that I did bring up uh, in my video on insulation that one when because I've got five of these louvre windows and each louvre window has five potential areas where there are gaps and those potential areas actually there are there are indeed gaps it's probably only about half a centimeter but when the louvre windows are shut there is a five millimeter gap that's no good because not only can creatures get in, but it also lets the cold air in in the winter. So I've had to go to the extent of bubble wrapping on this side and bubble wrapping on the outside as well to make sure that all those gaps are closed. So that would be an area definitely on my greenhouse wish list that I would hope that some greenhouse manufacturer would address at some point. And while we're talking about the door, this particular door design, and I'll just show you this, for whatever reason, but we'll just nip outside and I'll show you what happens here. Can you see down at the bottom how it's like on a, in a sliding groove there? Well, that groove gets full of all sorts of little bits of stones and any debris that comes along, which means that when I try to close the door, it, I mean, it's not going to do it now, is it? Obviously, because I'm demonstrating it. But it sticks, and I have to try and lift it to stop it from sticking. There you go. You can see it sticks. Now that, to me anyway, is not a good design. Okay, so we've talked about gaps in doors, gaps in frames, uh, doors that don't close and open properly without having to try and lift them up. Um, we're talking about the vent openers now. So if I take you up to the vents, now I've got a lot of double vents here. I've got four huge double vents. So you can see they go all the way across there. So that's one double vent. And each double vent has two of these openers, the automatic openers. Now, obviously, at the moment, I've taken the auto, auto vent openers, and they're a good design in terms of they're very easy to, to take out and to put back again. Uh, I'm happy with that. But what I'm not so happy with is the fact that they open at 18 degrees Celsius. Now, again, if you're a greenhouse grower, but you only grow during the summer months, then 18 degrees is probably the temperature that you want. Wouldn't it be great if we could have a variable one? Or even one that, I mean, one that opens at a higher temperature would be ideal for me because I have that period during autumn and during spring or early autumn and, and perhaps late spring where I don't want the greenhouse to open up when the sun is on it because it's still below 18. Now, even though they open at a temperature of 18, that doesn't mean that outside it's 18. It can be a lot colder than that. And therein lies the issue. If you're growing things like I'm growing in this greenhouse, I really only want it to open at about 24 or 25 degrees Celsius during that period of time. Now, I understand that there is, uh, I think they call them orchid wax tubes or something along those lines that you can, that you can buy. But again, they're very expensive and i mean i don't know whether again it's a wish list but whether you could come up with something that was variable that would be excellent or if it could be an option when you actually buy a greenhouse in the first place to get the orchid wax tubes that would be a good idea wouldn't it for people like us who grow these kind of tropical plants so on the wish list there is i wish that these vents didn't open quite so early Still talking louvre windows, I'll just point you to a different one down here, you can just see it through the different Trotoscanti about there. Now I did try the manufacturer's own auto louvre window openers, okay, so these are just like the ones that open the vents, except they're specifically designed to open the louvre windows in this 
particular greenhouse. Now I tried two types. I tried the manufacturer's own and I also tried one, like a general purpose one, purpose one off eBay. Neither of them worked. Uh, not to the extent that I wanted them to. They did indeed open the window, but when it came to closing it, they left like a two, three centimetre gap. So they didn't actually close it properly. So that, that's something that would be useful. If somebody could come up with a design, either completely change the design of the Louvre windows or make it so that they, the auto vent openers work properly and properly opened it and properly closed them when it was needed to be closed. It's no good for me if the temperature in here is gonna drop below a certain level because all these Louvre windows are still half open. And while we're talking Louvre windows, how great would it be to be able to open the things without having to get right under the benches and you know nearly chop your hand off and knock three plants off and bang your head on the benches and so on to get them open? Why not have some kind of handle or some kind of lever system that works its way up here so that I can do it from up here. It's all right when the greenhouse is empty, but when you've got all these plants in it, and let's face it, that's what a greenhouse is for. It's for putting stuff in it. I know you might not think that when you drive around the, uh, drive around the UK and you see greenhouses, 99% of the time they're completely empty or they're full of junk. They're just like a storage area. Uh, but yeah, if I could actually open these Louvre windows, then that would be very, very useful to me. So that's another point on my wish list. If you're a greenhouse manufacturer, take note. Okay, and we're outside for this one. So this is about the shading. So I'll show you how my shading works, which is a really nice design. If I just reach up there, there we go. Um, I can pull this thing down right the way down to the bottom or in this case here I can leave it halfway if I want to. So this is a really good design for shading because it means I can lift them up, lift them down whenever I want to. So I will just take you back inside so I can explain what I really want to happen with this shading. So what you were just looking at is the other side of this sl sloped roof here. That's what you were just looking at. So I have that shade cloth there, or those roller blinds that I can pull down in the, in summertime. It's not enough. The, the shading, I think they said it was 60% or 65%. So I still need some other shading underneath it or on the inside. Uh, but how great would it be if there was some accessory that you could purchase that was like an auto shading, like automatic shading? So for some, some way, some mechanism of detecting the light intensity inside the greenhouse and depending on how bright or how dark it was, obviously when it's bright, really bright, means the sun's out and the automatic shading slides down the roof. I'm sure they have that in commercial. They must have something like that in commercial greenhouses and glass houses. So wouldn't that be great if that's something that we could have in our greenhouse in the UK or in a temperate climate? I know probably the cost of it would be too much, but it's a wish list. So that's something for if people have got plenty of money, you know, it's there, isn't it, as, a, as an option. And I know if you're a, if you're in a business or you're a manufacturer, you always want like a premium option for things. So that might be something that someone could look into at some point. But I would certainly love that for my greenhouse. And then you could make the most of the sunlight when it comes out. Uh, you could make sure that it wasn't going to burn your plants because you know that it, the shading is coming down. But you could then make the most of the darker days by the automatic shading going up. And you know that your plants are getting the best light. Of course, I've got grow lights in here, but nothing matches that natural light, does it? And we can't talk about a greenhouse wish list without talking about insulation because that's probably one of the biggest bugbears for people when it comes around to winter. Now, I've left all this bubble wrap on. I left it on all year because I don't really think it makes much difference to the temperature in the summer. If you've got everything open and it's all ventilated, then it's just like having double glazing in the house. So why not pay some attention to insulation if you are a greenhouse manufacturer. That certainly would have made me choose a different manufacturer if I'd have found one that did pay some attention to it. So first thing, putting bubble wrap up is an absolute pain in the behind. There are no two ways about it. Even when you've got a complete empty greenhouse without a thing in it, putting bubble wrap up is not an easy job. 
it needs two people at the very least. And even then, it's still a difficult, time-consuming, uh, finicky job. Imagine trying to do it with all these plants in it. It's practically impossible. Um, because of the nature of tropical plants, when it gets round to being cold, um, I'm certainly not inclined to take all these plants out to put some more bubble wrap up. When the time comes when I have to replace it, I guess I'm going to have to do it piecemeal, bit by bit. But I'm hoping it's going to last a long time. I'm pretty sure Ed from Ed's Orchids told me that he'd had his up for 10 years and it was still fine. So that's my plan. So why not, if you're a greenhouse manufacturer, have a look at how you can make this easier. How can you make it better? Well, one thing I've thought of straight away is why not have double glazing? That was never an option. Why not make the glass in a greenhouse doubled, double glazed with a gap in between because that would definitely make a big difference. Too cost prohibitive? I don't know, but it's a thought. Another option, which to me would be even better, is why not give some thought to providing a, an insulative solution outside the greenhouse? Surely there must be some material that is insulative, high insulative properties that lets light through that could be clipped to the outside of a greenhouse. I'm thinking some, were, some kind of polycarbonate, but not the ones with the, like a clear, really clear polycarbonate and make the outside of the greenhouse so there's some kind of fixtures or fittings where you can clip this stuff to it. Much, much easier than trying to do it inside and it can be easily removed when it comes around to the summertime. It's a simple enough idea. Nobody seems to have come up with a solution to that yet, but it would certainly be something I would be interested in purchasing uh, even now in the future. If they could make it so it would adapt to existing greenhouses, how fantastic would that be? If you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments. Now, one good idea that Rhino came up with that I didn't see many other greenhouse manufacturers coming up with is this rail across here, this rail. Um, it was probably there for some kind of structural benefit, but notice that they've put four holes there along there for hanging things. Terrific idea. However, there is a big gap there that goes along there. It's like about two feet on this side, and two feet on the other side with no holes in it. Why? Why not put more holes? Obviously, you don't want it like completely perforated all along so that the, as a structural element, it makes no difference. But surely a few more holes or even another one of these things, places to hang plants would be marvellous. If you look at my greenhouse here, there's a large space at the top of the greenhouse where there is nothing. Now, for me, it's great having all these benches down here with the plants, but why not? do something like I mean I've rigged something up there and I've seen other people rig all sorts of different things up I've even rigged these poles along here but surely something could be put inside a greenhouse anyway some or you could purchase something so that you could make use of these spaces because I don't really like this kind of thing I mean it, you know it doesn't it, it looks kind of jerry-rigged and that's for me I want it to look a little bit aesthetically pleasing I don't really want it to all be totally like DIY stuff you know I want I, if there was something in existence for example these rails that are already here more holes in it more of these rails or something else where I could make use of this upper space it's like the upper canopy in a rainforest isn't it that's what I would like so that's another item on my wish list and just a couple more items on my wish list. Now, this one is particularly good for this, actually. And we're talking about taller eaves. Now, these eaves are about five foot tall. And I think out of the other greenhouses that I looked at, there weren't many that were as tall as five feet. Because obviously, you look at a, a greenhouse, you look at how tall it is. And for somebody like me, I'm six foot six. So the greenhouse that I had before, I had to duck to get into it. I couldn't get through the door. And then when I was inside it, because the eaves, I think, were only about four foot tall. And that made a great difference because the slope of the roof is going to be steeper. And obviously, for me, I can't walk to the side of the, the greenhouse because it was so small. The, this five foot greenhouse at the eaves is better. But if it was even taller still, why make it five foot? Why not make it taller than that? 
you know, you could still slope the roof up to wherever it is. If it was six foot, it could slope over to that. It is a wish list. I know it's not going to be ideal for everybody. Some people don't really mind about that if they're not as tall. But for me, that's on my wish list. I'm always speaking as a relatively tall person. I'm always keen to make sure I don't bang my head for about the umpteenth time. So the final item on my wish list is about ventilation and about the heat exchange within the greenhouse. So one of the great things about this Rhino greenhouse is that <clears throat> while it's got all these vents, it's got these four double vents at the top, which are automatic. It's got the five louver windows at the bottom and the front door, double doors. So what you get during the summer months, because okay, I can get it to a point where I can heat it up. I can keep the heat in as best that I can, although we've already discussed that that's not absolutely ideal. It could be better. But during the summer months, my biggest problem is cooling the greenhouse down. The whole side of this greenhouse is all facing the sun. That's all south facing. So it gets very, very hot in summer. It gets even with all the shade, the blind shades, sorry, the roller blinds rolled down, the extra 80% shading that I put up, even with that, it gets up to 36 degrees Celsius. So one of the good points of the design is that get all these louvre windows open because the low down and on my last greenhouse it was high up for some bizarre reason because the low down it pulls in the cooler and it sends out the warmer through the vents at the top so you've got this constant flow all the time which is terrific doesn't do it absolutely ideal but it's better than nothing and it's certainly better than my last greenhouse but with a thought to that why not provide a space for extractor fans or even as an accessory you could have an extractor fan fitted because an extractor fan at the top there one at the top one at the bottom or perhaps a couple at the bottom and then you've got this at uh, this situation set up there where you've got one extractor fan i think roger has this kind of setup but one extractor fan actually pulling the air in the cooler air from the bottom and the other extractor fan sucking the warmer out of the greenhouse now that i think would really make a difference to the temperature and um, i'm sure mick with his master values would be very very pleased to keep his greenhouse cooler and then you don't end up with all these black marks on your leaves hopefully so that's my wish list in terms of greenhouse accessories how i wish my greenhouse would be and it would make my plant growing life much better obviously it's a greenhouse it's not a grow room some of those might be and I know we have talked about uh, some people with grow rooms, like, for example, Roger. Margaret from Emmy's Orchid, she might have uh, some ideas on her grow room. So whoever you are, whether you're a YouTuber or a grower or you're just an interested bystander, let me know what you think. Do you think there's any merit in those ideas that I've come up with? Can you come up with any of, you, of your own? How can we improve this? I'm going to tag Rhino Greenhouses in this video. They may not watch it. They probably won't watch it, but I'm going to tag them anyway. Maybe they might do through curiosity. It'd be interesting to get a manufacturer's point of view and to see what they think, uh, where maybe there's some idea in the pipeline for the future. I know if you're a business, I have a couple of businesses, they're nothing as grand as Rhino Greenhouses, but if you're a business, then you're always interested in customer feedback. And if it means that you can come up with a product that might make you some profit, then of course you're going to be even more interested in it. So that's my reasoning for doing it. Uh, not totally selfish, but there is a little tiny bit in there. <laughs> I can't deny. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.